The loud noise of pots and pans woke me up suddenly. I sat up in bed, my heart racing. Mark was already out of bed, and his side of the bed felt cold. I felt a familiar dread as I heard my mother-in-law's voice coming from the kitchen. Mark, you should have married someone better, Eleanor said in a mean tone. As I quietly moved closer, holding my breath, even after 25 years of hearing her put me down, her words still hurt. I hoped Mark would finally stand up for me, but he stayed quiet as always. I walked into the kitchen, trying to be brave. Good morning, Eleanor, I said. She turned around quickly, giving me a mean look. Oh, look who finally decided to join us, she said sarcastically. Before I could say anything, she started complaining about how I keep the house. She criticized everything from the dish towels to how I load the dishwasher. Mark kept busy with his coffee, avoiding my eyes, even though I was silently asking for his support. You know, Mark, if you had listened to me years ago, you could have married a woman who knows how to manage a home properly. Eleanor continued with a voice full of disdain. I felt my face turn red with embarrassment and anger. Why didn't you defend me? I asked Mark, my voice shaking. Do you agree with her? He looked down at the floor, shifting his feet nervously. Mom, that's enough, he mumbled, but his weak attempt to stop her only seemed to make her bolder. Don't be so sensitive, Beth, Eleanor said dismissively. If you can't handle the truth, that's your problem. As she turned back to the stove, I saw the pain in Mark's eyes. But at that moment, I felt deeply betrayed, not just by Eleanor, but also by Mark, who promised to love and protect me. I thought I would have a peaceful weekend to myself while Mark was at his weekly golf game. But just after noon, the doorbell rang. I already knew who it was before I opened the door and saw Eleanor standing there with her lips pressed together in disapproval. Well, aren't you going to invite us in? She demanded, gesturing to her husband, Gerald, who was standing behind her. As usual, I forced a smile. Of course, come in. They walked past me into the living room, and Eleanor looked around the room as if she were checking for dust. I decided we should have a family lunch today, she announced, settling on the couch. My heart sank. So much for a relaxing day off. That's nice, I said through gritted teeth as I went to the kitchen to make something quickly. Eleanor's voice came from the other room. Honestly, Beth, I don't know how you can live in such a mess. Have you even cleaned this week? I took a deep breath, reminding myself not to react. But her criticisms kept coming as I prepared a simple salad and sandwiches. I'm surprised you even know how to cook, she said as I put the food on the table. You'd think after all these years you'd have learned something about being a proper housewife. Gerald stayed silent as usual, but I could feel his quiet judgment. Why did you have to bring them here on our day off, Mark? I asked desperately when he got home later. He looked away, shrugging helplessly. She insisted. You know I can't say no to her. As Eleanor kept criticizing my homemaking skills during lunch, I felt my frustration with Mark growing. Why did he always let her treat me like this? Just when I thought Eleanor couldn't be more intrusive, she announced that she was planning a big family gathering at our house without even asking me. I've already invited everyone over for dinner next Saturday, she said one afternoon, walking into the living room without asking, as usual. You need to clean this place from top to bottom, Beth. It's a disgrace. I clutched my jaw as she went on and on about how my housekeeping was not good enough. Mark said nothing and pretended to read the newspaper. The week leading up to the dreaded dinner was a nightmare. Eleanor kept coming in and out, criticizing every detail and giving orders about how she wanted things set up. By the time Saturday arrived, I was a nervous wreck. Why is the table crooked? Fix it, Eleanor snapped as I set out the plates and silverware, just as she had instructed. I did my tongue and straightened the tablecloth with shaky hands. 
the doorbell rang and the first guests began to arrive. Aunts, uncles, and cousins I barely knew. Eleanor greeted them all with a big smile, playing the perfect hostess. This place looks lovely, she said to my aunt. She's worked so hard to get it ready for us. My face burned with embarrassment as the backhanded compliments continued throughout the evening. Whenever I caught Mark's eye, he quickly looked away. After dessert, Eleanor started clearing plates from the table. Honestly, Beth, I don't know how you manage this meal. The potatoes were so bland. That's enough, I said, finally reaching my limit. I turned to Mark, who was slumped in his chair. Why didn't you defend me? Why do you let her treat me like this? He looked at me helplessly as the room went silent. At that moment, I realized our marriage was at its breaking point. After the disastrous family dinner, I felt like I couldn't take it anymore. Seeing the helpless look on Mark's face while he stayed quiet during Eleanor's attacks was the last straw. I knew I couldn't keep living like this. The next day, I called my best friend Linda. She has known me since we were kids and is always brutally honest, even when I don't want to hear it. You have to get out of that toxic situation, Beth, Linda said firmly after I told her about Eleanor's latest insults. Mark is too weak to stand up to her, and she'll never change. I took a deep breath. I know, but how can I just walk away from my marriage? Sometimes walking away is the only way to save yourself, Linda replied. You've given Mark more than enough chances to put his mother in her place. It's clear he's chosen her over you. Her words hurt, but I knew she was right. As much as I loved Mark, I couldn't keep exposing myself to Eleanor's cruelty and his unwillingness to act. Over the next few weeks, I started pulling away from Mark and focusing on my own life. I took up gardening again, something I had always enjoyed but Eleanor had mocked as a silly hobby. I began making plans to meet friends for lunch or dinner without asking for Mark's opinion. He looked confused whenever I made excuses about his mother visiting or mentioned some other activity he wasn't invited to, but I stayed determined, keeping my true intentions to myself. A sense of determination grew inside me. I was done being a doormat for Eleanor, for Mark, for anyone. I deserved happiness, respect, and the freedom to live on my own terms, and that's exactly what I was going to do. With newfound resolve, I began taking steps to become independent. I opened a separate bank account and started putting a portion of my paycheck into it each month, keeping it a closely guarded secret from Mark and his parents. Whenever Eleanor would make another unannounced visit, I stayed polite but distant, no longer doing everything she wanted. If she criticized my housekeeping, I just shrugged it off. Her comments no longer hurt me. What's gotten into you lately? Mark asked one evening, his brow furrowed with concern. You've been so different. I forced a smile, just reevaluating some things, that's all. I didn't explain any further. The more I pulled away, the more strained our interactions became. Mark seemed completely confused by my sudden aloofness. The once passive wife he knew was slowly disappearing before his eyes. Good, I thought. Let him wonder. Let him realize I'm no longer the doormat he allowed his mother to walk all over. In truth, my mind was focused on bigger plans, finding a way to finally break free from Eleanor's toxic grip once and for all. With each paycheck I saved, that future came closer. I knew it would devastate Mark when I finally told him my plans. A part of me still loved him and hoped he might eventually find the strength to stand up to his mother himself. But I couldn't keep hoping for something that might never happen. I had to do this for myself. My new mantra became independence at any cost. The road ahead would be difficult, but I was determined to walk it alone if I had to. No more settling, no more suffering in silence. It was time to put myself first. With each paycheck I squirreled away, my secret savings account grew larger, and eventually, it was enough to make my long-awaited move. 
One afternoon, I slipped out and met with a realtor, explaining that I needed to buy a small home just for myself. She showed me a cozy little bungalow, perfect for a fresh start. I put in an offer that day, using only my name on the paperwork. A few weeks later, the house was officially mine, a space where I could finally breathe free from Eleanor's toxic presence. But I knew keeping it a secret was only delaying the inevitable explosion. That night at dinner, I could barely look at Mark without thinking about the news I was about to share. Eleanor prattled on as usual, criticizing everything from the meal to how I'd set the table. Enough, I said firmly, setting down my fork. I have an announcement. Eleanor raised an eyebrow but stopped talking. Mark looked at me with a puzzled expression. Taking a deep breath, I met his confused gaze. I bought a house just for me. I'm moving out. The words hung in the air as Eleanor's face twisted in anger. You ungrateful little, how dare you make decisions like that without consulting me? She yelled. That's just it, Eleanor. I replied calmly. It's my decision, not yours. I don't need your permission or approval. Mark seemed to shrink in his chair as his mother continued her tirade. I waited for him to speak up, to defend me like he never had before. But he stayed silent and sullen as always. In that moment, I felt both liberated and heartbroken. Leaving was the right choice, yet Mark's passivity showed how little he valued me after all these years. Mother, stop, he finally mumbled. Faith deserves her peace. After I announced my decision to leave, an uneasy silence fell over the house. Eleanor had stormed off in anger, as I expected, but it was Mark's lack of reaction that hurt me the most. He sat there with his shoulders slumped, unable to look at me, as if I had just blindsided him instead of standing up for myself after years of torment. Well, I asked when the silence dragged on. You've had plenty of chances to defend me against your mother's cruelty. What are you going to do? Mark opened his mouth, then closed it again. I could almost see the struggle within him, a lifelong tug of war between his controlling mother and his desire to please everyone. I... I'm sorry, Beth, he finally said, his voice barely a whisper. You're right. All this time, I've let my mother walk all over you, over us. He dragged a hand down his face, looking suddenly much older. I realize tonight that if I don't stop this now, I'm going to lose you for good, and that's, that's my worst fear. Tears filled my eyes despite my determination. Hearing him actually acknowledge the dysfunction and admit how much he failed me broke through the wall I'd built. For once in your life, you need to choose, I said, my voice trembling. Your mother or me, because I won't live like this any longer. Mark's jaw tightened, and I saw a flicker of determination I hadn't seen in years. I choose you, he stated firmly. I'm done with my parents' toxicity. If they can't respect my wife, then I'm done trying to please them. In that moment, I felt a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, Mark could find the strength to prioritize me in our marriage. But I knew this was just the first of many challenges we had to face. After Mark declared he was choosing me over his toxic parents, I felt a bit hopeful about our marriage, but I knew rebuilding trust wouldn't happen overnight. We had years of hurt and dysfunction to work through. In the days that followed, Mark seemed more confident in his decision. He stopped taking Eleanor's calls and ignored her increasingly angry voicemails demanding explanations. I finally feel free, he admitted one evening over dinner. Like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I smiled. Cautiously, still afraid to get my hopes up too much, I said, I'm glad you're seeing things clearly now, but you know your mother won't give up easily. Sure enough, within a week, Eleanor showed up unannounced, banging angrily on the door. Mark, you can't shut me out like this. We're family. To my surprise, Mark didn't even flinch. He just pulled aside the curtains to reveal her red angry face, and then turned his back. 
I think you should leave, mother, he said calmly. Beth and I have made our decision. Eleanor continued to shout and argue, but Mark stayed firm. I could see the anger in Eleanor's eyes as she realized she had finally lost her control over her son. After Eleanor stormed off, Mark turned to me with a sheepish smile. I should have done that years ago. I'm sorry it took me so long to put you first, Beth. Tears welled up in my eyes as I looked at the newly confident man before me, so different from the passive person he had been. I'm just glad you finally saw the light, I said, pulling him into a hug. It would take time to fully regain my trust, but in that moment, I felt a deep sense of hope for our future, a future for just the two of us, finally free from Eleanor's toxic influence.